as I think a lot of people at that time, late 60s to 70s, young, experimented with it, and eventually got a haircut, moved on, got jobs, and it was just a moment in time, much like, say, the hippies in the 60s and the communes. Now, we've come to a place in society worldwide where you have Japanese Rasta, American Rasta, there are memes about it. Has Rasta... The, the concept of Rastafarianism gone beyond just an actual ideology and a serious statement to just one more thing that has been commodified in, in today's society. I think you're really asking if it has been that diluted. No, it has not. The ideology and the philosophy is probably stronger than ever. The fact that we have drawn brothers and sisters um, across racial divide, across world divide and so on, is powerful. And that has to do a lot with the music, the music that went out, especially Bob and many of the other brothers and sisters that has contributed tremendously. But in terms of the ideology, the philosophy, the power, that has not in any way been diluted. Persons that have adhered to the faith and have come and participated have come with a strong message of overstanding Haile Selassie, overstanding Africa, overstanding um, even to the point of seeing Jamaica as a Mecca, you know, and seeing Jamaica, as, even some in Africa see Jamaica as the home of a higher spiritual value. This is an inborn concept guided by that ancient principle, even in modern times, that says to us, not only are we black, but the things that we carry, the red, gold, and green, the behavior and everything. It, it, it's, it's an innate blackness that, 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 that needs to come to the fore and will eventually come to the fore and rule the world. That's the extent that we think globally. This is a supremacist idea then, sir? It, it's, it, it's not only a premise idea, but it's something that we work towards and it is something, the mere fact that you point out that Persons from Asia, America, Brazil, Russia are now seeking to know more about the philosophy of Rastafari. That in itself gives it that global reach. And um, Well, if it's a black thing, yeah. as you say, and it's yeah. obviously rooted within blackness within yeah. Africa, mm. and then you have the globalization of it, how the blackness? If so then global, everything, else would, have, everything else would have to be subsumed to black right. supremacy? Definitely. So you are a black supremacist? Absolutely, my brother. So then how are you any different from a white supremacist? Big difference, because a, a, a white supremacist seek to lord his white supremacy over black, over other people, all other people. White, that's how white people behave. We are not intended in any way <clears throat> to don't press and in any way... You just want to be in charge? No. We With the saying, supremacy? The, no, no, our this, philosophy. This, this, this is what? The ideology. Hmm. That is what we espouse. We are saying that um, the, the ancient of hmm. the black man, the civilization which came down the Nile and all of that in Africa and so on, which was the first set of civilized people, the first set of civilization, we are saying until you can surpass that, then this is what we stand for. And if you all acknowledge that you also come from that civilization, then we welcome Sir, it. with all due respect, Julius Caesar burnt Rome, burnt uh, Egypt. 
Marcus Antony ruled Egypt as co-pharaoh. Those civilizations are dead and gone. Where is the supremacy in that? No, but I think, and I, you see, the, the, the term supremacy is is being um, misused and so forth. And 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 what Ras Miguel was trying to say is that when African movements, because Rastafari is not the only movement, you know, uh, you have other black movements that preach black supremacy, but it's not to be equated with white supremacy. The same that black power, for instance, the black power movement, is not the same as white power. In other words, the difference with white power and white supremacy is about dominating other races. Now, with black people, we are not concerned about dominating other races. Our thing is more about equality. It's more about elevating black people to a level because we've been denigrated. We're the ones that have been suppressed. So black power was about self-empowerment where we can... So I, I completely yes. understand that, but yes. your colleague said supremacy under blackness. Am, am, I, am I misquoting you, sir? No, man. I think what, what I hear is that there's a, there's a different, if you, if you understand supremacy in a white European context, you are, in, you are imposing it on a black idea of supremacy, which is the upliftment of black people yeah. rather than, and the idea that, that black people rather should Rather than seeking supreme. to conquer yeah. without the white race and so on. We're not out for that. It's yeah. but, but, but what we're saying is that our, our stance, Rastafari, that, that enrich blackness that because we're not seeking in any way to capture anybody or to go out and um, militarily oh, yeah. rule anything or anything, oh, which is, you see, that's the difference with um, separation and apartheid. Apartheid is when you have a train, and on that train you have one very poly, posh coach with sponge and air condition and all of that, and that is occupied by the whites. And then all the other coaches on the train people have to sit on the ground. So all of them yeah. is on the same train, but the difference in terms of where one yeah. is located now, that's where apartheid, that's the difference. So you're, you're separate, but you're not equal. That's what I mean. And you're advocating what then? So we are, we are saying now that in regards to, we are in regards to other persons trodding the road of Rastafari and so forth. Whereas it, when it started out by Leonard Howell and the brothers and so on, straight um, Pan-African Strong, ideology. still Pan-African. Okay. Pan-African, you know. It's just that we are saying that Africa yeah. being the cradle of civilization, being the, 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 the home, being the first, that all others must come to that seat you said, and well, foundation. I think to that understanding. But here, if I may, what, what, what has happened is we also have to realize that different groups, the the, the, the Maori people in New Zealand, for instance, they relate to Rastafari because it's anti-oppression. So other people of color have been subjugated in their own way. The Aborigines in Australia, they have dealt, they had to deal with colonialism and the, the impact of colonialism. So even the native Indians in, in, in the US arguably could identify with the message of Rastafari, which is saying, do away with oppression, do away with domination. So Rastafari is anti-domination, anti-oppression. That's a global message that registers with a lot of people worldwide. So for those people who see oppression uh, and domination as inherently evil, they're going to identify with the movement. And the truth is, is that you have white Rasta that don't identify racially in the same way as black people do. And you have some who do, because the irony is, is that when I was in the US, I had, I saw a white Rasta um, will come to me and say, you know, we have to go to Africa. You know, what are we doing here? And this, this is a person who was phenotypically white, you know, talking to me and he said, my ancestry is Africa, I have to go back. And you know, I had to smile because I said, well, this man is really keen. But it varies. You have some who are, they attach themselves to the movement, but they're not necessarily yearning to go back to the motherland. So some will attach themselves to the ideology, some to the cultural um, uh, accoutrements, the, the, the cultural elements of the movement. So there's different things that appeal to different people.